My guest can speak supernaturally in many languages that he's never learned. Next, on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, the investigative reporter. I'm here with Dave Robeson. Now, Dave was a young man, and he had a vision from God that dramatically changed his life. Tell me about that vision, Dave. I was uh, 30 years old. I had a hunger that was so strong in me. At the time, I was ultra-Pentecostal, which is just... We got caught in some things that were very legalistic, and we thought that if we did these things, it would please God and we'd draw close to Him. But I did all of them. Everything they told me to do, I would, I would do. To take my jewelry off, to what I wore. And if this hunger inside of me was so strong, it, it, at times I felt like I was going to die. Uh, thirsting that nobody could seem to quench, you know, I was so hungry. H hungry to know God better. To God and to know Him after, after His power. I just uh, had you to You know, know we him. read the Bible, but in the average Christian church, it's so far removed, it's almost like a foreign book as far as reality. Yes. I remember in this hunger, anything anybody would tell me to do, if it promised I could have more of God, I'd stop and I would do what they said. Somebody asked me, how are you baptized? And I told them, they said, that's your problem. Hmm. One of them said, oh, your problem, you're not walking in power. Look at the jewelry you're wearing. And I took it off. In each case, before I was powerless and afterwards I was powerless. But after this vision, and I woke up and uh, I expected to see the bedroom just as normally. It, it, it was the anointing that woke me up when I opened my eyes. It wasn't the bedroom. It was a vision. And I was, I was in a meeting sitting on the left-hand side. A man was officiating. He, I knew it was my service, and he was ready to turn it over to me. And the atmosphere was so thick with the power of God. There was people in wheelchairs all over. And I knew it was my service. So he says, now our evangelist, and he looks at me, I start to get up. And he turns and looks at the curtain. And a beautiful young woman walks out from behind the curtain and takes the service. She ministers, the power got so thick that everybody got out of the wheelchairs. Yeah. Then she looks at me and says, one of you men failed in the ministry. And the whole crowd disappeared, and it was just me and her. And I knew it was me. And I came, of course, who else was there when the crowd? I so, came out of the vision. So in there. effect, God was saying that I have this wonderful work for you to do, but you're not going to get it. Right. And so when she said this, one of you have failed, and the whole crowd disappeared. When I woke up, I told my wife, or come out of the, the anointing, I said, swim, sink. I said, I don't care. I can't live this way anymore. I, I just can't. So I resigned my job. Two weeks later, I found myself full time. Nowhere to go, nowhere to preach. And that's when at the same time the mill whistle blew, I went down and locked myself up in an eight by eight prayer closet down at the church. And I didn't know how to pray. You know, I really didn't know about praying in tongues because of the the holiness I belonged to said you could only pray in tongues. Which is a supernatural language yes, it written is. about in the Bible. Go ahead. I could only pray in tongues when it would come on you and anoint you during a service. So I really didn't know you could just pray in tongues as a supernatural language of edification to build you up in God. So I went down to the prayer closet the same amount of hours I was going to work. I thought if I report to the prayer closet, and I just locked myself in and began to pray in tongues. 
and pray in tongues and pray in tongues, not even know it was legal, not even knowing what it would do to me, just to survive the hours that I had committed. To. Uh, out of curiosity, did you feel anything? Did you see anything? Not for the first two or three months. How, how could you keep doing that for two or three months with nothing going on? I just knew that I couldn't live the way I was. And I just knew that if I gave myself to God, I thought that if I kept doing that, somewhere along the line, He would come. You know, that He would do something, He would meet me. And I remember a girl finding out what I was doing and coming knocking on the door and saying, you feeling anything? And I said, as a matter of fact, I am. And she said, what? I said, a real tired chin <laughs> and a, and a dry, From tired so tongue and a dry throat. And she says, excuse me, I've got to go. And I said, goodbye. But I wouldn't stop. And just to tell you, you know, that was 25 years ago. And just two years ago on our trip to India, we had half a million people there. In one mass prayer, 5,000 people's teeth was filled with silver and gold. Five? Did you hear that? 5,000 people's teeth were filled with silver and gold? Uh, did you lay hands on no. them? Did, how, how did it happen? Just prayed. Uh, the Spirit of, of the Lord came on me, and I just lifted my hands and began to worship Him, and He talked to me about creative miracles, and I, prayed for the whole crowd, half a million. And out of it, 5,000 received. And that's not counting the people that was blind and lame and couldn't walk. What not, happened to some of them? They come running up front, free and walking and seeing and testifying, much less the people with the teeth who were crowding up to testify, till we lost track. You realize you could have given up after a month of praying and not feeling or seeing, don't you give up. I believe there's someone watching us right now that's ready to give up. Don't you give up because victory is right around the corner. We're going to be back in just a moment, and you're going to find out about miracle after miracle after miracle, and find out that Dave says he's not special. He's learned the key for intimacy with God. We'll be right back after this. Hello, YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I'm here with Dave Robeson. And this fella had such a hunger for God, he didn't know what to do about it. So he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to work for God. I'm going to go six hours a day. When the factory whistle blows, I go into the prayer. And when it blows again, I take my lunch. And then again, I go back. And at the end of the day, when, the, when people are finished with the factory crew, I'll be finished. And I'm going to pray in a supernatural language the whole time. And a month goes by, nothing happens. A month and a half goes by nothing happens. Three months go by, and Dave Robeson went to a meeting, and something very strange happened. Dave? The, the same woman that found out what I was doing came and knocked on my door. She said, you know, there's a lay witness in town. I said, what is that? She said, well, it's a church that really hasn't embraced speaking with tongues, but they're coming in from all over the state. And they're going to meet. And would you like to come to the meeting? And I said, yes. <laughs> you know, because I'd take advantage. I'd do anything at that point. I said, God, this is a legal reason to go somewhere. And so I said, I'm going to run home and change. And I came to the meeting. So when I came, I didn't know that the woman they set me next to had come in on a crutch and was crippled in her hip because I got there late. And so, <laughs> so they set me down. And, and I was all excited because here I was with people, real live people was around me. <laughs> you know, I'd been locked up for three months. <laughs> You're ready to explode. <laughs> yes. And uh, the man was ready to give a little Bible study at the home meeting. And I'm sitting there and I'm so excited. 
somebody was going to actually speak the word. I was around real people, you know. <laughs> so, so they brought, they said, do you want some coffee? And I said, yes. They brought me some coffee, and I'm so excited. He's ready to speak. When he got up there, if, if his notes would have been a scroll, they would have rolled out across the floor, you know. And so here I'm sitting there, and he begins. And we know that Jesus Christ is the great celestial go-between, the troubled waters of mankind. Did you fall asleep? I was watching the little rings in my coffee for excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Out of sheer boredom, I was thinking, I'd rather be back in the prayer closet. What did I get myself into? And out of sheer boredom. Now, to this time, not anything had happened, really. You know, I still just... Sheer boredom, I turned around and looked at the elderly lady next to me. And I had no idea what was about to happen. She's about from me to you. And suddenly it looked like somebody put an x-ray up between us that I could see through of a deteriorated hip socket. That's what it looked like to me, deteriorated. Just dark, two or three inches down into the bone. I'm looking at it, and the guy was orating. <laughs> and I was looking at this, and I blinked real hard thinking, this will clear up, and it did not go away. So I looked around to see if anybody else could see it, because it was just suspended there. And everybody was just acting normal. So I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? An absolute silence. He didn't say anything to me. And later on, you know, I went on to destroy that meeting as they knew it. <laughs> but, oh, well, what did you do? I said, well, I jumped up and prayed for her. <laughs> did she want prayer? Well, well, she what didn't happened exactly with her? ask. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you were just, you were a little anxious. <laughs> I was a little bit. Later, later I said, God, uh, you know, you, uh, why'd you let me destroy that meeting as they knew it? And he said to me, just as plain, it was in a camp meeting later on. He says, oh, if I wasn't listening to that man, why should I make you? <laughs> so he let me destroy the meeting. <laughs> So, so, but what happened to the lady with the hip? That's what I, and I, I mean, she must have been shocked when you get up there well, and start praying for her. Well, it was kind of, I turned, I says, ma'am, you got, you got trouble in your hip. And just when I said hip, arthritis jumped out of my spirit so loud. I said, it's arthritis. She said, why, young man, that's what the doctor tells me. And I yelled, praise God. <laughs> she goes, I beg your pardon. I says, oh, I, I mean, he's going to heal you. She says, I beg your pardon. And I says, ma'am, can I pray for you? Well, to her prayer meant sometime in the course of my day <laughs> to bow my head and remember her. And not me. I was raised Pentecostal, ultra holiness, jumping in the back of pews, spitting cotton balls or yelling, you know. <laughs> So she says, why, yes, you may. I jumped around in front of her, got on my knees, and I grabbed her legs, and I pulled them up even with oh, my no. stomach. Are you sure you didn't get arrested? <laughs> One was about this much shorter than the other, you know. And so I closed my eyes because I was afraid. Because I seen other people pray, but I was afraid, you know. So I closed my eyes, and I started in. You know, my hardest prayer, like they taught me to pray in holiness, you know. In the name of Jesus. Well, little did I know, on the first Jesus, it popped and came out and she was instantly healed. But did I know that? No, I didn't know that. I like to wrestle that poor lady off on the floor. You <laughs> we were still praying. <laughs> so, so the golden-tongued orator, he sent his associate over to break it up. He said, go break that up. He comes running across, and I looked up just in time to see him, and it all looked slow motion to me. He's just coming across the floor. He got there just in time, and I looked up to see the miracle. Instead of breaking it up, it struck him dumb. I mean, he goes, hi, hi, hi. He couldn't even talk. So by that time, the orator was winding his message up with, what is the most outstanding sequence of events that could possibly to be attributed to the God factor in your life? And his associate is going, 
over here, over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they tried to tell her that God didn't do those things, but it was too late. What did she say? She jumped up out of her chair, started dancing and run over and got her crutch and started beating people with it, saying, what do you think, Sonny? <laughs> <laughs> I think that spirit was contagious. Was she, was she really healed? Yes, sir. Said that afternoon they had a banquet. It hurt my problems, because my, no, it hurt my feelings, because <laughs> they didn't invite me. <laughs> oh, understandably <laughs> so. But she stood up in the afternoon banquet and told the whole testimony. By the time she got done, she yells out, and what he did for me, he'll do for you. And what he did for her, he will do for you, and you too can walk in this supernatural power. Dave's going to show you how. Don't go away. Be right back after this. Now, Dave, uh, what happened to you, and this is the most wonderful thing, what happened to you can happen to anyone that's hungry for God. You even speak now in languages you've never been instructed. Tell me about that. As I continued to pray in tongues, and the power continued to increase, and the meetings started taking place like overseas, when, uh, that, by the way, that night that he filled 5,000 people's teeth with mm -hmm. silver and gold, it was 200,000 Hindus born again. That is power. <laughs> that is power. In one night. And we averaged, I, I averaged that week out, that year, we had 4,000 born again a week. Tell me one language you've spoken in that you were never instructed. Japanese. How do you know it was Japanese? Because there was a missionary to Japan who spoke Japanese. And I was exhorting the crowd and teaching them. And he says, wait a minute. And he came up and said, you know that you're doing that in Japanese? And he began to translate French, Russian, Spanish. That sure beats German. language school. <laughs> but we're talking about a supernatural language. If you are born from above, if you've told God you're sorry for your sins, asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, be Lord of your life and live inside of you. If you haven't done that, do that right now. It's urgent. We're going to pray that you would be so filled with the Spirit of God and you would speak in unknown tongues. And when you speak in these unknown tongues, the Bible says that your spirit is edified. Its spirit's like a muscle and it will be stronger and stronger like Dave's is right now. So right now, I'm gonna ask Dave to pray for you to be filled with God's Holy Spirit and speak in a supernatural language. Would you do that, Dave? Yes, sir. When you come into the kingdom, you were born again and received his nature. What you received is the nature of God that can be taught by God. So what he did then is made the Holy Spirit available to the church. When you were born again, that happened to your spirit. That's you. But the Holy Spirit is the third person of God. And when he come, he's a person. Your human spirit is another person. And when you get baptized, this happens to you. I mean, it actually happens to you. So when you ask him to come into your spirit, the Holy Spirit literally steps in the inside of you. And the very first thing he wants to do is pray for you. So he will begin creating this supernatural language that's come to you all the way from heaven. And in this language, he'll pray for your personal life, for your understanding of the word and for the absolute unfolding of God's plan for you. He'll pray in this language for you beyond your faith and beyond where you walk. So he literally creates this supernatural language on the inside of you. And the moment he does that, your tongue will literally begin to shape the very words he's creating on the inside of you. So when I begin to pray for you, what's going to happen is the Holy Spirit's going to step in the inside of you.
and your mouth and tongue is going to begin to shape those beautiful words. When that happens, just yield yourself over and begin to speak them out. And you will not only be filled with the Holy Spirit, but you'll have tongues, the supernatural language, for your own personal edification. The Holy Spirit will literally be able to pray for you. So get ready to receive right now. Because when we pray, He's going to follow you out of heaven. You're going to feel Him saturate you. And when you do, your mouth's going to want to speak those words. Just yield over and speak them out. Now get ready to receive. Just close your eyes. Open your hands, palms up, just to the Lord as you're receiving. And get ready now. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, let your glory come. Baptize them in the Holy Spirit. And bring that supernatural language up out of their spirit now. Right now, Father, baptize them. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the gift of speaking with tongues. Now, right now, right now, while he's on you, and you feel him, right now, just begin to yield over and speak that supernatural language out. It'll be second nature to you very, very soon. Just begin to, just begin to see koala. Ngorabasia, nasito hukalesio, ukora mokora buf, ekanda silavrama kwanze, shoke desi endemeke. He's just actually saying by the Spirit, as I translate, he's saying, "Oh, he's saying, yield to me, my child, yield." Now. And some of you are experiencing the presence of God right now. You know you're experiencing it, but you haven't spoken this language because you're waiting for something to take over your tongue. You do the speaking. The Holy Spirit gives you the words. It's just not coming from your brain. If you will begin to tell God how much you love Him, just begin speaking out loud as quickly as you can. It doesn't come from your mind. It comes from your spirit. Oh, oh, there is such an outpouring of God's presence on you right now. And Dave, you talked about a supernatural peace. Yes. The people are experiencing a supernatural peace right now. Yes, so strong. I've named it peace, the aggressive weapon of God. It's so that's, strong. That's what you have. Peace, the aggressive weapon of God. That's exactly what you're experiencing right now. And there, there, there are people that you've got to just kind of get out of the boat. You've got to start speaking this language. You say you don't know what to say. It's perfect. Of course you don't. It's not from your mind. It's from your spirit. Just begin to speak. As quickly as you can, Oh, something so wonderful, wonderful, wonderful is happening to you right now. It's the peace that passes human understanding. It's, it's there.